My dear friend in Christ, a very senior priest professor in a well-known institute of scripture and theology related a beautiful experience he had while conducting examinations on the subject that he taught for over two decades and the subject Trinity. Yes, the Holy Trinity. This is what he recalls. A seminarian taking the theology exams, that's a student preparing for priesthood, was given 10 minutes to prepare and then 10 minutes to explain the Trinity. Students were normally allowed to use the Bible and other books to prepare during those 10 minutes. And of all my students who went on endlessly explaining the Trinity to me, one student always stands out in my memory. For six full minutes, this seminarian simply looked at me smiling and almost seemed like he was prepared to explain the Trinity to me. Then he said quite politely but boldly, Father, even after over 20 years of you teaching about the Holy Trinity, you always told us in your class that the Trinity is a great mystery. We cannot fully understand it. Then how can I, Father, how can I explain it to you in just 10 minutes? And the priest recounts, I was so humbled but also amazed at his honest and humble response. And what do you think I did? I gave him 99 marks out of 100. <laughs> yes, my dear friend in Christ, the word Trinity itself is not found anywhere in the Bible, but it's a word we use based on our reading of the scriptures to denote or to describe the living presence and the unity of the Father, of the Son and the Holy Spirit as three persons but yet one God, the Holy Trinity. In fact, no other religion in the world has this belief in three distinct persons but one God. Though hundreds of analogies have been used to understand and to explain the Holy Trinity, none of them, none of them are complete or sufficient to explain the Holy Trinity. However, let's think of two analogies. St. Augustine presents God as the sculptor who out of overflowing love and creativity carves a magnificent statue of Jesus' the son using a chisel and a hammer which represents the Holy Spirit. Now this partly explains the distinctiveness of the three persons and the unity between them. Now this explanation is not complete because you cannot limit God or the Holy Spirit to something material. But maybe think of a flame, maybe a candle flame. The flame, the heat of the flame and the light of the flame are three different elements. Can you separate one from another and still have the same effect? In some ways, this explains the unity and the inseparable nature of the three persons of the Holy Trinity. My dear friend in Christ, now, after all attempts to explain the Trinity are insufficient, what is more important for you and me is to admire and to love the perfect unity between the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit and reflect prayerfully on this unity of love, this unity of purpose. If we look at the Trinity as a model of unity and apply it in our daily lives as Christians, how wonderful life would be. Think about a family in unity, parents and children working in perfect love and harmony with each other. Think about a religious community, the superior and community members working in perfect love and harmony. Think about our church congregations, the religious heads of the congregation and members of the congregation working in perfect love and harmony. My dear friend in Christ, if there is one wonderful way in which you and I can honor the Holy Trinity, it is by living in harmony with each other. And we can see this harmony between the three persons of the Trinity. Especially in Jesus' parting words to his disciples in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. You and I can draw, can attract more people to the triune God when we live a life of harmony with each other as a reflection of that wonderful unity and harmony of the Most Holy Trinity. My dear friend in Christ, think about how much you reflect the unity and the harmony of the Holy Spirit in your life.
you might like to look up in the description to this video for more related links. If you like this reflection you listen to, do share it with others. May you have a good and godly day.